Hi everybody, I thought I'd come out with a video. I believe many of you are like myself that watches a lot of uh, rapture related videos in end times Bible prophecy as well as the current events that are going around lately. And I believe we all as the body of Christ are watching for the imminent return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in particular with the rapture but i've noticed this uptick in the urgency in many of the videos so i believe that the rapture is indeed converging and in luke 12 jesus talks about discerning the time but rather discerning this time so i just watched the last few videos that were put out by the youtube channel isaiah 53 as well as many other channels but his are very short and sweet and pack a punch and i watched his latest video and i'm going to include that here after the intro and go into why i believe that the rapture time frame may indeed be falling between the end of February through early March. I have the 28th through the 2nd of March with a caveat. It should be around this time frame. My guess, I'm not a prophet, but I do see things converging towards this time. And let me go into that after I present Isaiah 53's latest video. Let me interject real quickly before I go to Isaiah 53's video clip, which is less than two minutes. So please watch all of it. But discern this time, which is spoken of in Luke 12, as I just said. And Isaiah 53, his next to last video had the 11, 11 and the 9 and the 11, which I'm being discreet here. I noticed something between the days of Lot and Purim, and that's the 11th day of the 11th month on Repo Man 64s, but I have more to add about Purim. And then in the heavens, there's a double conjunction and the sun being the waterfall of Aquarius, which I've never seen a double conjunction before, but if they have occurred in the past, I'm sure they're very rare. And then finally, I have to make an updated correction to my video I put out a few weeks ago on Ezra's third decree. I made a mistake with my math and I just wanted to quickly update that at the end of this video. But I want to put the other more essential things first. But I'll be going through these topics and then from here, we'll go forward into and please watch all of this Isaiah 53's latest video. Exodus 14.22, when God delivered his people through the Red Sea, there were two massive walls of water. And in John 2, verse 2, the disciples of Jesus are called to a wedding. And Jesus' hour is linked with six water pots that are filled to the brim and turn blood red. We know his hour is near, and right now, Russia's Belgorod submarine carries six water nukes that create massive walls of radioactive water. And as the world is on the brink of a nuclear war, America has decided to butcher babies at nine months old. Jesus said it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. And in Revelation, when the Son of Man is revealed, we find a reference to a furnace and a sound of many waters. We know the tribulation is coming. So keep watch on the Belgorod, because before the birth pains start, the waters must break.
So at the intro of this video, he has, has 2022 truly in it. So the question is, has 2022 truly in it as it is stated exactly? And a lot of us are now starting to see based on the calendars, whichever one you look at, it doesn't end with the Gregorian calendar on the new year starts on January 1st which goes into 2023. But I'm in agreement with him that 2022 has not ended yet. There's just too much evidence for that. And Repo Man as well has that the new year begins with the next day after the Equilux, which is the day of equal parts, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime which occurs every year on March 16th. Therefore, the new year starts on the next day, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, according to the Enoch calendar. But if you use other calendars, we can all uh, agree to disagree that it's not on January 1st, that it has to be in accordance with the Jewish calendar. And then one of the following captions he has is Red Sea Rapture. I think many of the body of Christ is in agreement that things are going to turn out just like when the Israelites were in essence rescued out of the land of Egypt with Pharaoh and his armies following close behind that it is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime huge miracle like the Red Sea parting and the rapture is a once-in-a-lifetime. Maybe there's two raptures, but we have never had that other than Elijah and Enoch who were taken. But many of us believe that it will in fact be a Red Sea rapture and that we're soon getting closed in you see everything tightening around us that it will in fact be a red sea rapture but one thing towards the end of his video which really captured my attention was the verse luke 12:54, when ye see a cloud rise up out of the west and then his next picture was the atomic bomb exploding. This really made me think that the Luke 12, 54 is actually alluding to day 12, 54. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So in Luke chapter 12, verses 54 to 56, it reads, discern the times, so in verse 54, then he, and that is Jesus, also said to the multitudes, but he had said earlier to the Pharisees, whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, a shower is coming. And so it is. Verse 55, and when you see a south wind blow, you say, there will be hot weather, and there is hypocrites you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth but how is it that you do not discern this time so jesus is talking about that we're able to read the clouds and the earth and say oh it's going to be this weather or that weather but we can't discern the time of when he is coming how can we not discern this time? So I believe Jesus is directly alluding to we should be able to discern this time based strictly on this passage, Luke 12, 54 through 56. So I think it's alluding to 1,254 through 1,256 days in particular with the sign that is shown in the sky 
that we should be able to read it and discern the time of his coming. So I believe the sign that we should be able to see in the clouds or in the sky that Jesus is referring to them being hypocrites and not being able to discern the sign is what is talked about in Matthew 24 verses 30 to 31 in particular, which says, and many of you are familiar with this, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, being the Revelation 12 sign verses 1 and 2, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and the only day of mourning is the day of atonement, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, in the clouds with power and great glory, and then the rapture in verse 31, and he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So this is what we need to be looking for and discerning as is mentioned in Luke 12. And I believe you add 1,254 through 1,256 days from the sign of the Son of Man. And then the Day of Atonement, which is the Day of Mourning, which is also Yom Kippur. And that only occurs in the year of a Jubilee. And then we'll be able to discern when the rapture is that is mentioned in verse 31. So let me go through this. So as Jesus says in Luke chapter 12, verse 56, that he told the Pharisees and the multitudes, he called them hypocrites because they could discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but they can't discern this time. And in Matthew 24, verse 30, again, I was saying the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, that being the Revelation 12 sign. And for those who aren't familiar with that, that is in Revelation 12, verses 1 to 2. Most of you, again, are familiar with this. But for those who aren't, it says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And as Isaiah 53's channel shows, we're nearing the point of labor pains and the Red Sea moment to occur. So the Revelation 12 sign it occurred in heaven on September 23rd, 2017, and it's a once in a 7,000 year occurrence. Like I said, Revelation 12 verses 1 to 2. Here's the sun clothing the woman, which is Virgo, the moon at her feet, a crown of 12 stars above her head, which are the nine stars in the constellation of Leo, then adding Venus, Mars, and Mercury, which are th three planets or three wandering stars, making a total of 12 that is crowning her head. And then Jupiter was in her womb for 42 weeks before it exits, so her being with child. So this occurred all on September 23rd, 2017. And I believe Luke 12, 54 through 56 is alluding to the fact that you need to add 1,254 through 1,256 days to the Revelation 12 sign, but more in particular, 1256, because that is the sign that you need to discern in the sky so that you can discern this time, so if you add 1,254 days to the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd, 2017, you get February 28th of 2021. But if you add the 56, which I believe he was Jesus was alluding to 
more so concerning this day, this time, which is like Luke chapter 12, verse 56, then you get March 2nd of 2021. But now we have to add in one Shemitah year as well as one Jubilee year to this time. So two more years added on to this date brings you to March 2nd of 2023. So when you in fact look in the sky on March 2nd, 2023, after adding 1,256 days as Luke chapter 12, verse 56 alludes to, plus a Shemitah year, plus a Jubilee year, which is the year of mourning, the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, you end up with this sign in the heavens that you should be able to discern the signs of the time. So you have the sun directly in the waterfall of Aquarius. You have a Jupiter-Venus conjunction in Pisces. So the king planet and the bright and morning star in Pisces. And you also have a conjunction with Mercury, the messenger, and Saturn being Satan. So that might be the war between Michael and Satan. So you will have on this side of Aquarius war, like in Revelation 12, chapter 12, verse 7. So moving quickly on to other signs that discerns this time, per Luke chapter 12, verses 54 to 56. This was also mentioned in Isaiah 53's video, the one before this, which he had mention of 1111 and many of you are seeing this i believe that is alluding to the red sea moment and the rapture so if you add the 9 and the 11 and you know what i'm alluding to plus 11 11 you get 2022 and again i don't believe this is the end of the year yet just simply because on the gregorian calendar we're past January 1st, but on the Hebrew calendar, I believe like with Repo Man 64 that we haven't entered or we haven't completed 2022 yet until March 16th and then March 17th is the beginning of the new year on St. Patrick's Day. And related to 11-11, is the 11th day of the 11th month, which is Adar, which is the day of Purim on the Enoch calendar, which falls on March 1st. And that's shown here on Repo Man 64's timeline, Purim, which is 30 days before Passover, 14 Adar, March 4th, the 348th day of the year, which is the 11th day of the 11th month. So the Feast of Purim, which is on the 11th day of the 11th month, which falls on March 1st, according to Repo Man 64's timeline, that is mentioned in Esther chapter 9, but I'm only highlighting what's in verse 24 and verse 26. So Purim simply means they cast lots, and lot is pur. And the plural of that is purim. You add an I-M to it. So in the 24th verse, they cast pur, that is the lot. And then in verse 26, so they called it the days of purim, plural, after the name pur, which is to cast the lot. So I believe this is also in connection with Luke chapter 17, verses 28 to 30. So it says, likewise, as it was in the days of Lot, in other words, when they cast Pur, or the days of Lot, plural, which is Purim, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, 
it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Verse 30, even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So I believe that Purim has a very strong connection to the days of Lot because it's the days when they cast Lot. So Purim and the days of Lot, and so I believe it'll be the celebration of Purim, which will be the 11-11, the 11th day of the 11th month, but also the days of Lot when it rains fire and brimstone. So again, it being the Red Sea moment in which the rapture occurs. That being on March 1st or March 2nd, based on the heavenly sign. And finally, I'll conclude with Ezra and Artaxerxes third decree updated. I'll refer you to that video. I had thought that January 23rd would be the rapture date. And uh, I mean, that's a fair assessment. But in fact, in hindsight, so in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, that the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And he, and this is the little horn, will confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. So that's actually what date it calculated. And uh, making the assumption of the rapture is not too far-fetched, but it was incorrect, just the same, and I have to apologize on that. But I did find one day later, January 24th, but 1971, if you add Daniel's seven weeks or 49 years to this, plus the other numbers I had, it ends up being Klaus Schwab, and the origination of the World Economic Forum, the WEF. So maybe it was alluding to the little horn starting to take reign of this year on January 24th, 2023, instead of it being the rapture date. So the little horn is coming in to power being the World Economic Forum. So I do think that, in fact, there is a strong convergence and it's getting even closer and closer, fine-tuning to the actual date. I believe that it'll be more so between late February and early March, more so in particular March 1st through 2nd. Again, I could be wrong. I'm not a prophet, but I do believe that there seems to be an urgency within the Christian community uh, with the timing of the rapture. I do believe that we haven't concluded the year 2022 on the Hebrew calendar that we still have through mid-March, another uh, month to go. And then with the World Economic Forum, and world events that are really shaping up and closing in that I believe that we are truly headed towards our Red Sea moment pretty soon in which everything will culminate. And with this latest stuff with the UFOs coming into um, the forefront and all that other stuff they're already priming the world's population to believe that that will be the explanation for the number of missing people because it's not going to be a few i don't think it's going to be eight billion people i think it's going to be way smaller but it'll be in the millions and you can't just easily explain that away um, especially with the children and uh, that are under the age of accountability so christ said in luke 12 verses 56 to 58 to discern not the times but this time and that he was calling the 
the Pharisees and the multitude hypocrites for not being able to discern this time uh, and they can read the clouds and so on and so forth. So we should be able to do the same. And many of us are seeing this. It's not only just my channel. I'm actually watching others. So we are all one big piece of the puzzle that we have that we contribute. And so by watching other channels, you glean information from other sources and you can kind of put it together and i'm not saying i'm the person that's put everything together by any stretch of the imagination but this is what i'm seeing and um but i wanted to pass it on as yet another piece of the puzzle uh, again i believe the rapture could occur at any time we're so close uh, i would more condense it to this period but i could be wrong but we're so close nonetheless so keep looking up and if you don't have your house in order please get it in order now and if you haven't been saved please come to the lord there is no time left so please call upon the name of the lord and you shall be saved not you might be or could be but you shall be saved per acts 2 and joel 2 and anyways um there are other better channels that explain the salvation much greater than myself again we're all part of the body of christ and we all have our talents and our gifts so anyways i hope that this video has been a blessing and um we shall soon see. Um, I've kicked the can a little bit further down the road, but I believe, like I said, on my behalf with my last uh, video, I was in error, so I have to apologize for that. But we see through a glass dimly at this time, but soon. Um, but we are children of the light, so we don't it's not like we don't see the day approaching whatsoever and are clueless. But anyways, and again, I hope this video has been a blessing for you. I'll put a link to my video, but mine's of the least of importance. But please take a look uh, at the other information presented prior to my updated information on Ezra and Artaxerxes Third Decree. That's the least of uh, all of the information presented here. So, all right, I will talk to you soon. Take care.